SmackDown Live begins this week with a recap of what happened last week about the Intercontinental Championship changing hands. Yes, we have not one, but two mid-card champions on Raw and SmackDown that can actually put on good matches and actually, you know, put on a good show as far as saying, oh, okay, yeah, that person was in the main event before and they can handle a mid-card title because they've had mid-card titles before. But anyway... It starts off with the recap and then the Ambrose Asylum. <laughs> Ambrose. Okay, so he announces that he's going to enter the Royal Rumble. Yeah, predictable, common sense. That's that. That's just the way that is. I mean, come on. Did you think that they weren't going to enter the Royal Rumble? <laughs> Any mid-card championship title holder? But anyway, no mid-card championship title holder has won the Royal Rumble. It... it just is that simple it's it's not gonna happen but anyway the funniest thing about the ambrose asylum is that he said that he wanted to get a real alligator there because they were in freaking louisiana and oh god on bourbon street <sighs> but he couldn't get a permit so he couldn't have a real alligator but he had an alligator's head and he named it Maurice. <laughs> funny Cues his guest. Ah, the pussy, the Miz. Miz and Maurice come down wearing all black. Again, you know, Miz enters the ring and he was like, "You have something that belongs to me." That match should have ended to outside interference because of the slap, and and it's like, okay, wait. So you wanted to keep your belt. You wanted the match to end by pussism. <laughs> That, that, again, because he's saying before he calls lawyers and stuff like that, and it's like, okay, look, talk about he, like, Ambrose manipulated a referee or whatever. Well, if you do call that lawyer, you'd be like, hey, you hit him with the belt and so on. Hey, the ref didn't see that, and the ref didn't ring the bell because the ref was stopped. There have been people that have been stopped for tapping before because of referee, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, you, he misses like, you have something that belongs to me. And Ambrose is like, yeah, you're right. I do have something that belongs to you. Miz thinks, and come on, we're not we're not gullible, we're not stupid. He wasn't going to give the Intercontinental Championship back. He's like, yeah. So he gives Miz his very own participation award. You tried. Yeah, because he did the same thing to Ambrose months ago. So I was just like, ha! That was like, that was hilarious. That was funny. That was actually, you know... So, The Miz gets upset, basically attacks Ambrose, but the funniest part is that when he tried to lift up Ambrose so his wife could slap him and do, you know, the work once again, Ambrose ducks, she ends up slapping The Miz, Miz gives, gets the dirty deeds by Ambrose, and Ambrose gets up and hands the participation award to Maurice. Yeah, bitch, you tried. So, anyway, that was the opening segment, and then the show kind of goes downhill from there with Natty attacking Nikki, Bella in the back, and it's like, oh, God, talking about good luck tonight because they're going to have a match. Wrong. They fight in the aisles. They fight outside of the ring, so the match never gets started, and Natty actually gets the fucking upper hand and beating her down and actually putting her in a sharpshooter. Okay, fine. Late, yeah. Delay it, delay it, delay it. But that's WWE for you. Even though we don't want this fucking match because it's not going to mean any fucking thing, they're still going to give us this feud anyway. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so you have Dolph Ziggler interview and he doesn't say a word at all. Okay. Which leads to Kalisto versus Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler... It's pretty much a tweener at this point, not full heel yet, maybe until the end of this match, because Kalisto actually wins. Dolph actually getting careless and laying on top of Kalisto, and Kalisto rolled him up. One, two, three. And Ziggler basically, you know, he just loses his mind and snaps and just starts hitting Kalisto. With, you know, he attacks Kalisto first, and then he goes out and gets chair and smack, 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 smack. Yeah, this is Smackdown, right? Smacks. Smack, smack, Apollo Crews comes out. 
kind of, you know, gets the upper hand for a couple of seconds, and then Ziggler gets the upper hand and starts smacking him with a chair, too. If you, if Dolph Ziggler establishes himself as a threat as a heel, then damn, and he couldn't do it as a face? Hmm. But at least he did that shit by himself. Yes, he, he, he had a weapon, but at least he did it alone. Yeah, but again, he's still on a losing streak. You know, him losing against Barrett Corbin and then snapping and then actually losing against Kalisto. He, he couldn't even get the Neville treatment. Neville, when he snaps, when he turns, he starts fucking winning. But you can't do the same thing for Dolph here? Not even against Kalisto? Fuck. Anyway, you get an interview with American Alpha and on Talking Smack when American Alpha was out that was on Talking Smack an episode when JBL was sitting in for Daniel Bryan JBL actually told them to stop saying ready willing and gable so you know they're not saying that anymore they're not even holding up a little you know towel anymore saying that I guess JBL actually gave him good advice but anyway during this interview yeah it was pretty clean cut by american alpha saying that they were gonna you know they weren't gonna lose they were gonna retain the belts and the wyatts yeah they're a good team but they beat them and the american alpha won't be beat so you have a cena interview that says that he has something to prove that he's you know and it was like yeah he's like you're right he has he has been a has-been and he runs down a has-been and a whole bunch of positive measures. And it's like, oh, God, please, end this. But he was still kind of, he was trying to rap like he used to. And he was a little edgy like he used to. I actually fucking like this. Push the boundaries. You had chair shots. You had ass whoopings. You, you look, push the boundaries of this. And we understand that you can't go full blown, you know, past PG era because there are so many fucking complainers that will go on Twitter or go online and saying this is too violent and stuff like that and all the snowflakes and you know the Hillary voter generation out there would just do nothing but complain but at least push the boundaries as much as you fucking can <sighs> which leads to the Wyatts doing their <laughs> saying of course nothing lasts forever and they're they're there to, they're there to get their belts back and Randy Orton is like we're here. <sighs> so, the Wyatts versus American Alpha. Uh, again, we already saw how this was going to show up, but tensions between Luke Harper and Randy Orton arise again. <sighs> so American Alpha retains the tag team championships. I don't understand how you can give Randy Orton and the Wyatts just a little bit of a tag team championship run. You didn't even give them a run. You gave Bray Wyatt a taste of fucking championship for the most li the limited amount of time as possible. You couldn't even have them hold it for six months. It's not like Bray Wyatt is going to win the Royal Rumble. Well, as, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think they would give it to him. I don't think that they would actually hype up Bray Wyatt to that point. So them losing the tag team championships and doing absolutely nothing with this Randy Orton, Luke Harper thing, and maybe the split, it's just irritating because Bray Wyatt should be in the world title scene by now, in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, the Wyatts lose the match and there's turmoil between Randy Orton and Luke Harper, Randy is the one that gets pinned again, and so an argument ensues between Randy Orton and Luke Harper. Bray Wyatt tries to separate the two, but Luke Harper actually goes for a kick, Randy Orton moves out of the way, and Bray Wyatt gets kicked. So after, you know, Bray Wyatt getting in both of their faces again, Bray just walks out on both of them. They, okay, so Bray Wyatt is gone, go at it, fight, 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 no. Luke Harper and Randy Orton just left it alone after that. <sighs> anyway, why, 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 why <laughs> is Carmella and Ellsworth thing still going? Oh, but before that, you had 
Becky Lynch, Daniel Bryan, and Alexa Bliss in the back. You know, they played a whole, you know, La Luchadora. And it was funny how Daniel Bryan even said, hey, who is it? Maybe it's Eva Marie? I even had an idea that it may have been Eva Marie, which was kind of funny that he said that. Because Eva Marie is not doing anything else. But anyway, a cage match is announced for next week on SmackDown for the Women's Championship. First ever on SmackDown, a cage match. You're not going to upstage Sasha and Charlotte. You're just not. I, I will be surprised if this is an excellent fucking match, but you're not going to upstate Charlotte and, and Sasha. You're just not going to do that. Not not with these women. No, it's not going to happen. So, yes, do your thing, but to do that, no. I, I just don't see that happening. But back to the Carmella fucking James Ellsworth thing. Okay. Uh, so, Carmella goes against someone named CJ Lundy? Um, wait, was this woman from the bygone era? Come on, okay. Jack Gallagher, the Vaude Villains, and CJ Lundy pair them together, have a faction of men and women, and run and win all the fucking belts. No? Then what the fuck was this all about? And Carmella, you know, James Ellsworth still interferes so Carmella can get the win. I understand that they're trying to fuel that, but fuck, man. Both rosters need more credible women there. They, they just do. But in this, or or what, you're going to give Carmella the belt? And for God's sake, don't somehow give James Ellsworth the women's championship. So you have the main event, John Cena versus Baron Corbin. And of course, um, the, the match was okay. It was okay. It should have went longer though. It, it should have. It should have established Baron Corbin as a real fucking threat. I love the fact that Corbin was talking shit during the match. When Cena even hit him the first time, Corbin was like, is that all you got? He was talking shit to Cena and Styles. And, okay, that part was great. But Cena beat him way too easily. You know, he did the typical, you know, five-knuckle shuffle and get and, and that, fuck you. I call it the F-U still. I don't like the... The, the AA, I don't like that. It, it's called the FU, okay? That, that's just my opinion. But, fuck, I understand that you're trying to work. Look, Cena is already in a serious seriousness bracket. We don't need that anymore. We need to establish others. And Baron Corbin, we need a fucking great heel besides AJ Styles. Dolph Ziggler's not cutting it right now. Bray Wyatt is not cutting it right now. We need more heels. Actual heels. Not, not cooter coochie heels. We need heels that we can take seriously in the ring. And I will make a video about that very soon. But that's your SmackDown Live review report. What did you think of the show? Was it eh or was it eh? Yeah, SmackDown has been, you know, doing a little bit better than Raw as far as, okay. Yeah, SmackDown is only two hours and they try to pack a lot inside the show but it's like damn what happened to your tag team division where look i can understand the hype bros are gone but what happened to the vaude villains what happened to the ascension why don't they, look you can actually make all of them look serious take be taken seriously but they're not doing it for some fucking reason what happened to jack swagger come on <sighs> look my point is you need to do more with certain people in order to have them be taken seriously so we can have that competition, so we can have that go around instead of the same fucking people challenging for the same fucking championships every motherfucking time. Tell me what you think. Are, am I on point or am I, you know, just full of shit? I'm always open for a debate and I always am open for comments. So rate, comment, subscribe, leave me a message. Maybe we could talk about this sooner or later. Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over top rope, both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. Duh. Look at all these fucking replicas and an authentic Intercontinental Championship. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.